Pozdrav svima, dobar dan. Evo danas smo u novoj seriji podcasta za digitalni učenički inkubator i razgovarat ćemo sa Janom Dejongom, nizozemskim poduzetnikom u Hrvatskoj, serijskim poduzetnikom, pokretačem brojnih inicijativa. Evo, danas ćemo čut njegove perspektive, njegova iskustva i njegov put od školskih dana do danas. Jan, hello, uh, dobar dan and uh, thank you for being here. Dobar dan, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's kick it off for, let's say, your personal story. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, definitely. Um, so 37 years old. Uh, I moved to Croatia when I was uh, 22. Uh, I'm married here. My wife is Croatian. Uh, together we have uh, four children. So I always say they're uh, pola pola, half Croatian, half, uh, half Dutch. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I started several businesses here in Croatia. The first business that I started was back in uh, in 2006, which is a uh, it's a company called M Plus Group. It still exists uh, today. Uh, as a matter of fact, today it's uh, it's one of the largest employers in the entire region. Uh, more than 10,000 employees at the moment and a listing on the Zagreb Stock Exchange. Uh, after I sold my shares in that business in 2016. I continued with another company that I founded called uh, Web Power. Uh, then last, or actually two years ago, I started another business called Crop, where we plan to uh, to bring the Dutch agriculture technology to Croatia. And um, I'm also um, uh, quite known for the fact that I started a digital nomad visa initiative in Croatia, um, making Croatia actually the second country in Europe and the seventh country in the world to welcome digital nomads, so the remote work professionals, to Croatia by granting them a staying permit. So that's uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> it, it sounds like a lot of work and a lot of stuff that you, uh, that you do uh, could be moved back a little bit. So Definitely. How did it all start from, let's say, primary school to today? How did your journey look like? How did you wind up here in Croatia? Yeah, so I mean, Let's start by saying that uh, I think I was I was obviously very fortunate growing up in in a country like the Netherlands. Uh, even though as you're growing up in the Netherlands, you might not realize it, but you're living in in, in one of the richest countries in the world. Uh, I grew up in a very safe environment where I could just go on a bicycle to to primary school without my parents around me. Uh, my parents, uh, my actually my dad. Uh, he re- he worked a regular job. My my mother was a stay-at-home uh, housewife, so to say, as it was very common in that generation for for that to be like that. So whenever I would come back home after school, my mother would be there. Uh, I have another sister, younger sister. She's two years younger than me. She's still in the Netherlands. Um, after uh, primary school, I, I started, of course. Uh, high school and then at one point I had to decide you know in 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 which direction are you actually going to go in in terms of education then um, my dad for example he was very much in favor for me to do something like accountancy to to start studying accountancy because he always told me if you are good with numbers if you are an accountant you will always have a job and um, as I started um, uh, it's like um, The, the, the educational system in the Netherlands works a little bit different than than here in Croatia. But as I started high school, uh, in my first year, you actually had to choose two directions. One of them was then, in my case, accountancy, based upon the recommendation of my dad. And the other direction that I took was, uh, was marketing communication. And uh, the way it works is that you have orientation classes for both directions. And then after like few months, you have to really choose in which direction are you going to go. And I kind of knew, like after the first class, that it was not going to be accountancy for me, but that it was going to be marketing communication. And I was very much inspired with that decision by the by the professor that I had at that moment. Uh, the, the way he was teaching about marketing, I, I, I started developing such a great passion for it that I knew that this is what I wanted to do in life. Um, How did your dad react? 
Well, he, I mean, uh, that's that's the thing, you know. My parents, uh, the thing that I love the most about them is that they have always been so supportive in anything that I ever decided to do. So uh, also when I was uh, 22 years old, when, when I moved to, to Croatia, I've, I told them that it was only going to be for one year, not knowing that it would turn out that I was going to really live here for, for more than a decade. Uh, but yeah, also at that moment, they were, they were very supportive and... Um, they never like questioned it. They uh, they just said, "Okay, do what do what you love to do." Uh, so, as you said, you are really involved in a number of things, a number of initiatives. Uh, what is it that you actually do? Could you to strive uh, to all the listeners here? Yeah. So uh, obviously, I'm I'm the founder of the company. So uh, the 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 initial idea uh, comes from me. Um, the whole uh, let's say creative concept in terms of, for example, uh, branding of the company and how to position yourself and to develop the proposition. So what is actually the product or service that you're going to be offering? Um, what is the, the target audience? Who are you offering it to? What are the conditions under which you're going to offer it? All of that, that's something that that that, that I enjoy putting together. And then um, uh, when, when starting the business, I'm, I'm very much involved in the business development part. So I'm Especially the beginning, you know, you need to understand that when I moved to Croatia, I didn't know anything or anybody here. I mean, I had no Kumovi here. I didn't study here. I didn't have friends here. I had no family here. Um, I also didn't know, for example, which companies are key players in Croatia. I didn't know who are the biggest telecom companies here or the biggest insurance companies here. So I had to initially do a lot of research myself, um, just using Google to find out to whom do I actually want to sell my products or services? And then to really proactively reach out and to introduce myself and to try to schedule myself meetings, to drive to those meetings. I moved initially to Split. You know, I thought it was a great choice to move to Split because it was the second largest city uh, in Croatia, which is like similar to moving to Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and Rotterdam is, is an economic powerhouse. There's a lot of business happening in Rotterdam. I didn't know that Croatia was so centralized and that everything was basically happening in Zagreb. So yeah, started in Split, and then I realized that pretty much for every meeting that I that I needed to have, that I had to drive like 400 kilometers to Zagreb. <laughs> to Zagreb yeah, and uh, but yeah, I did that uh, for for many many years. I've been uh, for more than a decade. I've been driving to Zagreb almost on a weekly basis. And um, actually now for the first time since this uh, global pandemic, since COVID, I've been traveling less because now more and more things can be done through, uh, through video calls. It's more acceptable for, for most people now to have a video call instead of me having to get in the car 400 kilometers to meet with somebody. Um, and then, you know, to, to get back to your question, what is it that I do at the end in, 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 a, in a business? So it's very much like I said, focused on business development, but I'm also the person that, that tries to put together the core team of the company. Uh, and at the end, my first goal pretty much with any business that I start is to make sure that, that I replace myself, that I'm replaceable. Uh, for, the, for the following reason, I don't want that my business depends on me. I want that the company can grow faster than that I could let the company grow. I never want that uh, the owner of the business becomes the bottleneck of how fast the company can grow. And the, what you what you need to do if you want to accomplish that, you need to hire really great people. And you need to give those people uh, open hands or a lot of space to, to let them develop the company for you. Yeah. And, and that, that's basically my main role in, uh, in, in the businesses that I start and that I own. Uh. I suppose everybody's wondering why did you choose this choose this path. So why did you become an entrepreneur? Was there some influencers or mentors or just your experience or what was it? I, I come from a very entrepreneurial family. Pretty much everybody in my family is an entrepreneur except for my dad. <laughs> uh, for example, my my grandfather. Uh, he's from a family. You know, we're luckily sitting down, but he's from a family with seventeen children. And uh, like literally all his brothers, uh, they all started their own businesses and all his sisters married into families with their own businesses. So, uh, and then on top of that, I have a lot of uh, like friends of my, of my parents. They are also having 
their own businesses. And as I was growing up, I was always just fascinated with with um, what those people are able to achieve by starting their own businesses. It's like independence. I'm not just talking about financial independence, but it's it's really independence in deciding what you're going to do in that day. You know, you didn't have to wake up and then go to the office to to work for somebody else. Uh, just that freedom is is something that that I always very much admired and wanted for myself as well. So at a very young age, I knew that I wanted to start my own business. I just didn't know yet at that moment what that business was going to be. And I've also always been very attracted to to do that abroad. In a, in a, in a, so not in the Netherlands. Uh, I always liked exposing myself to different cultures and to meeting different people. And, you know, the, the, the unknown territory excites me. Uh, you yourself are an entrepreneur. As you said, you've met and you've been surrounded by a number of them. In your opinion, from your perspective, what are some of the most important traits of entrepreneurs, leaders, people that, you know, Uh, lead their companies to 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 grow and develop businesses. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, entrepreneurs uh, they they need to be uh, quite stubborn. Uh, you need to um, to have a clear idea for yourself where where do you want to go, uh, in which direction do you want to go. Uh, you need to be able to um, to inspire other people uh, to the point where people belief in, 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 let's say, the mission and the vision that you set out for for that business. Uh, and, and you need to be a bit of a pit bull, you know. You need to be able to, to bite into something and just not let go. Uh, don't give up because I, I personally think that a lot of businesses actually fail um, because people give up too soon. You need to know that um, almost 50% of businesses don't survive the first five years uh, after they are founded and and yeah it it um it it i think that you can only run your own business if you have really a great passion for it because if you don't have a great passion for it it's simply too difficult to do it without passion and to overcome all those obstacles yeah, and challenges I mean, that are surely going to come. I'm going to tell you now something that I'm not even really proud of, but the first 10 years uh, that I started my business, I was working 70, 80 hours a week. Now, which sane person would do that? You can only do that. You can only endure and endure that, that kind of suffering, so to say, if, if it's something that means so much to you. If it doesn't mean enough to you, you would never go through that kind of suffering. So is there any difference between true entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs? I mean, the entrepreneurial culture in the entire world, I mean, in Croatia even, is, you know, starting to develop, it's starting to become a hit, mm -hmm. it's popular to become an entrepreneur, to have your own startup. So do you have any perspectives on, on that? Well, I mean, uh, uh, being an entrepreneur simply also means that, that you like to... Uh, Uh, to undertake things, to really start setting things in motion. And um, some people, of course, I mean, they are maybe, they, they, they maybe look up to, to successful entrepreneurs thinking by themselves, you know, it's really great, that's something that I want as well. But you need to understand that very often the first, for example, four, five, even 10 years of the business getting started, uh, it's not so glamorous. It's, it's not... Um, fast cars and play hard and, and, and work hard, play hard. work hard, play hard. It's not like that. It's mostly just work hard uh, for very little money. Uh, parking your car, preferably not in front of the client because nobody wants to see that car. That's the reality. And, um, you know, very often, I mean, when I look at companies like, for example, Infinum, which are great stars today, um, the first thing that I do is, you know, I, I look at, okay, when was this company founded? And if I remember correctly, I think that this company was also founded in like 2006 or 2007. So we're talking about a company that is now also already there for 13, 14 years. But not many people realize that. They just look at, oh my God, these guys, they, they started a business with, with Porsche. Wow, how cool is that, you know? Yeah, they're a startup. They're a new yeah, <laughs> but they're not a startup. They <laughs> Maybe they talk about it as, as, as it is a startup, but this is not a startup. I mean, this company exists for more than a decade. Uh, 
So you've managed, you've run uh, a number of businesses. Could you describe to us in a vivid way what are the worst and the best things about running a business? Um, well, let's start with then the worst, I would say. Um, especially when you start a business or when you're a business owner, um, you know, some people, they might want to start a business because they think that they can then decide when they want to work. Uh, but the reality very often is that when you start your business, you're pretty much just working all the time everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, I was, uh, I was going on holidays bringing my laptop with me, you know, and instead of just doing my job from Croatia, I would be doing it from a different country in a different time zone. And that was my holiday. Um, just also the, the 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 stress that comes along with it, you know. You uh, you very often you uh, uh, you have moments where where you're in survival mode with your company, where you don't know where you're going to get the money from to to pay the next paychecks of of your staff, and uh, that kind of that kind of stress is is sometimes very high, at very high levels, and you need to be able to deal with that. Then on the other hand. Um, the, the, the beauty, of course, of starting your own business is that it really is in your hands to create something out of nothing. I mean, I've, like I said, I've started businesses out of nothing that today employ thousands of people. Um, and, it, and it's just a very exciting feeling to me that there's so many people that wake up in the morning, they go to a job that they enjoy, uh, where, they, where they get a, 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 a good paycheck, uh, because I'm the one that started that company once a long time ago. That's a that's a great feeling to me. That that's something that I enjoy. And uh, if you can make, uh, if you can create environments where people feel safe and respected, and and where they can develop themselves, and at the same time you have clients that are happy with with the products and services that are being delivered by your company, yeah, then. Uh, creating such opportunities for, for further growth, for further employment. Yeah, these are things that drive me, that that's something that I enjoy. A lot of kids today, you know, want to get into entrepreneurship. They're thinking about it. Uh, one of the most important things for them, for every entrepreneur, is not so much, you know, the, the entrepreneurial perspective of starting a company, but the entrepreneurial mindset. So what would be your message or what would be let's or some of uh, the key steps or things that kids today could do in order to develop uh, that entrepreneurial mindset? Well, I think that um, the mindset of an entrepreneur needs to be that you want to solve problems. And the more problems that you can solve or the bigger problem that you can solve, the more money that your company can produce by doing so. Uh, so you need to, at the end, you know, deep inside, you just need to be a, a person that wants to solve to solve other people's problems. And um, and I actually talk about this very often. But if you if you want to look at, for example, a country like Croatia, um, people in general, we we of course complain a lot about the state of this country. Uh, the things that are perhaps not good or, or should be improved. Um, I mean, people in general complain, you know, not only in Croatia, in the Netherlands, people also complain. But if you listen very carefully to, to what are actually people complaining about in, for example, Croatia, or what people are saying, you know, this could or should be improved in Croatia, if you listen very carefully to that, then you can actually identify opportunities. And in my opinion, listening to those complaints, if you take those complaints, what those complaints are actually waiting for are the right person, entrepreneur, to come up with a possible solution for that. And let me give you one example there. So in Croatia, we always talk about how we have the best food in the world. We have great domestic food. Our food is at the highest quality. We all know somebody that has the best potatoes, the best tomatoes. That's what we are known for, let's say. Or at least in Croatia, we are known for our own good food. Um, at the same time, we are also saying that we should be a country that should be able to feed Europe. But we're not. 
we are actually an importing nation. Um, in the past, before I moved to Croatia, Slavonia used to be able to produce enough food to feed entire Yugoslavia. And today, we are importing food more than that we are exporting. So then that's a problem. And then if I look at, for example, a country like the Netherlands, where I was born and raised, which is a country that is smaller than Croatia, is the second largest exporter of food in the world. So you have United States at the first spot, then you have the Netherlands as the second largest exporter, and then you have Croatia, slightly bigger than the Netherlands, um, used to be able to produce enough food for the whole region, is today a food importing nation, and the entire country is screaming that we have the best food and that we should be feeding Europe. So where are those entrepreneurs that are going to do something with that? And, and, and I, at one point, after being frustrated long enough, I decided that I wanted to do something with that. So I want to actually be that Dutch guy that kind of like forms the bridge between Croatia and the Netherlands, where I want to bring that Dutch agriculture technology, so the greenhouses, the Staklenitsi, I want to bring that to Croatia on a massive scale, start producing food on a massive scale in Croatia with ultimately two missions. First, to become less dependent on importing food, because if you, right now in the winter, if you go to any kind of supermarket, the only tomatoes that you will find are either Dutch, Spanish or Italian. You cannot find Croatian product almost. Um, and then the, the, the second goal is so first to become less dependent on importing food. And after that, I want to help to turn Croatia into a food exporting nation again, like it used to be. A bold mission. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, definitely very exciting. Yeah. So it it uh, sort of answers uh, my next question. I want to talk about you a little bit. So, uh, what are you passionate about? What drives you? What motivates you? Let's say on a business level, on a personal level. Yeah. So, I obviously started very very young. My first business. I started when I was 22, and I sold my first business when I was 31. Uh, and when I was 31 basically just sold my shares, did really very well. I had a wonderful exit there. Uh, what I had at that moment is I had a lot of time and I and I didn't really know, okay, what am I going to do now? And at the same time, I was also um, a bit afraid because I had all this time and I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I was also thinking by myself, um, this company that I, that I started once with 400 employees, uh, is this the biggest thing that, that I will ever do in my career? Have I already reached the peak of my entrepreneurial career? Am I even able to do something that that is potentially even going to get bigger than that? And um, I was also talking with my wife, and and my wife, she, she actually asked me, you know, you need to de decide for yourself or define for yourself what it means to do something big. So is it, is, does that connect with big revenues or big number of employees or do you maybe want to do something where you can leave a big impact with with your business through your entrepreneurship and knowing that for my family we have decided that our future is in croatia my kids are half croatian um, and if you look at the, the the challenges that this country has with the brain drain we we see a lot of young and talented people leave this country when i moved to croatia in 2006, there were four and a half million people living here. Today, there's 3.88 million people living here. So a lot of people have left this country in order to find opportunities abroad. And what I therefore wanted to do is, and that is kind of like my personal mission these days, is that through my businesses, through entrepreneurship, I want to create opportunities in Croatia so that my children, but also the children of Croatia, that they don't have to move abroad to find opportunities, but that they can find it in Croatia. And so what I'm focused on is what can I do in terms of business, something that excites me, that can create new opportunities that would want people to stay here. And just to, for example, uh, revert back to, uh, to this agriculture opportunity, to me, it would be amazing that if, for example, in 10 or 15 or in 20 years from now, if somebody that was born and raised in Winkovci 
uh, by the time that that person needs to go and, and decide to, to study, that that person might not go to Zagreb to study economics, but might want to go to Osijek to study agriculture. And instead of doing a job in an office in Zagreb connected to economics, to maybe go back to Winkovci, where that person person's roots are from, and to run a greenhouse over there. And, and, and that's, ah, that's next level. That's something that I can get very passionate about if, if I think about these things. So if you look about, you know, both business and in life, what matters to you the most? What would you say is something that is extremely important to you on, on a personal level? I just like to enjoy the things that I do. For me, it's really important that but that doesn't matter what I do, but that I do it with a lot of joy with uh, with people that I that I enjoy being with, that I that I even love. Uh, really, just to to have great quality time, uh, both uh, at work and but also at home. Um, you know, uh, the the other day I was reading about it. Um, you know, people very often they sp speak about work life balance. But actually what we are facing right now, it's work-life integration, where work and life is not two separated things. You know, we are literally integrating that into one thing and it's called life. And, and, and these are not separated things anymore. I work a lot from home. And, you know, on one hand, that's, that's a crazy situation because I have four kids and it's always very noisy and crowded at home unless they're when they're in school, which is only very shortly. But yeah, it's, 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 it, you know, you, you're working and living throughout the whole day. There's not, there's not like a set time that you are really uh, doing just one thing. And, and yeah, if that is the case, if we're talking about work-life integration, then for me, it's important that, that that part is just very enjoyable. Most and of the that time, you're having fun. yeah, and that you're having a good time doing it, yeah. And a lot of times on entrepreneurship, there are moments that you're not having maybe so much fun when you're experience, experiencing failure. So, uh, how do you deal with failure, or how have you dealt with failure your, your entire life? Well, I mean, um, you, you know what they say: uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. So um, failure is, 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 um, is not something that, that um, is the opposite or really of success. It's, it's, it's part of success. And um, you, have to, you have to experience that in order to, to make certain conclusions for yourself on how you would want to do things differently perhaps in the future. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really categorize things as, as failure. Some things just work out, some things just don't work out. So how do you deal maybe with the pressure? I mean, a lot of kids today are putting, let's say, maybe even too much pressure on themselves in terms of, you know, grades, stuff that they have to learn. And there's all sorts of activities that they're involved in. So there's a lot of pressure involved. Yeah. You know, how to cope with that. And obviously you have a lot of pressure in business. So what are maybe some mechanisms or stuff that you do to help in yeah. that sense? So... First of all, I think that you need to ask yourself the question, who is putting that pressure on you? You know, because very often we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because we want to impress other people. And uh, in my opinion, but that's not good pressure. You know, you should put pressure on yourself because deep inside, really, you want to do something. You want to be good at something. You want to start something and change something. That's a good pressure for yourself. But you shouldn't be doing that because somebody else is looking over your shoulders and, and, and therefore you have that kind of pressure. Um, what I also think is very important is to, to be positive and optimistic. And for that, I think it's important to surround yourself with the right people. Because very often what you see is, is you know, people very easily talk negatively about things, you know. It's very easy to, to, to give bad feedback about somebody else's idea. It's very easy to do that. But to, to be supportive and to even encourage people to do something. Um, Or ever build upon that idea. To exactly. Help. To further expand upon it. Uh, that's sometimes hard to find. But that is the thing that you need to be looking for. 
a, 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 let's say a group of people that that are more supportive than that they try to keep you down at their level. Always try to surround yourself with people that you look up to, that that in in a way are inspiring you for what they have already done. Uh, Like-minded people, yeah. Uh, you went through a lot, both in business and in life. Uh, what were some of the most difficult challenges uh, that you faced on your journey? Let's say from the business perspective. Yeah, I mean these these are uh, mostly connected to to cash flow issues. So just running out of cash, just don't have no, not having enough money to do what you have to do, and then um, you know very often with uh, with banks. They will, uh, they will offer you an umbrella when the sun shines, but then when it starts raining, they will take away your umbrella. So, um, you know, that's also one of the things that I've learned that um, uh, in order to, to have, let's say, uh, a, a cushion that you can fall back on as a business, it's, it's good to prepare that cushion um, in, 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 in during good times. So um, when you're having a really great year, uh, and, and, and your revenues are going up and your profits are going up, that's actually a really good moment to, to enter a bank and to talk with them like, hey, can I maybe get an overdraft? You know, I might not use it, but it's just great to have that overdraft. And that is not even going to cost you that much money to, to open up the overdraft uh, on your account, even though you're not using it. Uh, but it's a great moment to ask for it because if you're going to ask for it when it already started raining, then they will not give it to you. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's just thinking ahead of time. So uh, you've already mentioned that sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Uh, what would you say were some of the key learning points uh, derived both from failure, but also from success? What, what are some of the key things that you learned from failure, but also, you know, from successes maybe yeah. to know yourself? Um, well, I, I would just say that... Um, I've, I've learned for myself how, how I develop my businesses. Uh, on one hand, you know, uh, you can have the best product or the best service out there at very competitive uh, pricing. The proposition can be really great, but if nobody knows about it, then nobody will buy it. So what is actually very important in, in everything that you do, in all of the businesses that you start, is that you have good content strategy and that you are using all those social media in particular. Um, and, and in my case, you know, with, with, for example, Web Power, which is very much focused on B2B, uh, to use platforms like LinkedIn to create content so that people actually know who you are, what you do, what do you stand for, how can you solve certain challenges or problems that companies have. That is very important. So have a good content strategy not only for your business, but also for you as a business owner, which is then therefore called personal branding. It's very important to, to focus on personal branding. Um, and then, uh, like, like I mentioned also previously, it's, it's, it's super important to surround yourself with people that are better and smarter than you are, uh, for them to actually help you to, to run this business. And don't micromanage those people. And I always tell those people as well, um, I'd rather have you ask me for forgiveness than for permission. So go and do what you feel is really best. No need to ask me for permission. Just go and do it. And if it fails, then you can ask for forgiveness. That's okay. Uh, I want to move back uh, a little bit, back to your, let's say, school and college days. Uh, what were you like as a student? If you remember, yeah, I suppose you do. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I was really uh, a great student. Uh, I, I never really had um, a great passion for for school. However, uh, the, the the subject such as marketing and you know I was I was learning about consumer behavior and these kind of things. Those things they um, uh, they 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 inspired me so much. They gave me so much passion for for me actually wanting to know all that that. I almost didn't feel that I have to that I had to study to get good grades for that. You know, I was just listening to the professor. I was reading those books, and I, and I really enjoyed it. and And I was doing great at exams just because 
I loved that subject, but don't ask me what my grades were for for foreign languages and 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 and, and these kind of subjects or statistics. That's also not really my thing. Uh, for those kind of things, I had to I had to make a lot of effort to to just pass basically. So uh, just to uh, talk a, bit, a little bit about that. So basically, marketing courses were your favorite. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but what are some of the the worst ones that made your you know that gave you headaches or stuff? Uh, like languages, that? languages. Uh, I had to learn uh, Spanish, uh, French, German. These were not things that I was very good at, even though German is is quite similar to Dutch. So my German is is, is okayish. Um, Okay, now I now I speak English, uh, but I, the, the the reason why my English is is at the level that it is is because I've been using it for past 15 years every single day. But when I was 22 and I came to Croatia, my English was obviously not at the level that it is today. You know, I was really struggling, and I had to push myself in 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 uncomfortable situations just to to get to the point where it is today. Yeah, but uh, th that's not my strong suit, languages. So uh, are there some uh, good or bad memories as well that you could share with us back in the days, you know, primary school, high school, college days, something, you know, yeah. more personal related? I, I have to say I have only good memories from, from that period. Uh, I wasn't really the, like the typical student. I, w I would go to school or university and then after after that was finished, I would very often straight away go to work. Uh, I started working in a contact center when I was 17 years old. So I was I was going to university after university, straight to the contact center. Uh, in the beginning, I was a call agent there, so I had to sell products and services over the phone. Then I became very soon after that a supervisor, a senior supervisor. And by the time that I was like 20 years old, I was operationally in charge of a contact center with about 200 employees at that moment. And that basically meant that there was no partying for me as a student. I was studying and I was at the same time working a full-time job, uh, running a contact center. Yeah, so, but- Is, uh, is that something that you missed or feel like you missed out on something or are you just perfectly satisfied? Ah, I mean, I, I am really very satisfied about the, the choices that I made at that moment. Uh, would it have been nice to go out and party more? Uh, probably, yes. I mean, absolutely. Uh, but I don't feel that I've missed out on anything. Uh, also, when I moved to Croatia, of course, I was, I was working very hard, but over the weekends, I would meet with people, I would have drinks, I would go out. So I, I've, I've had definitely my fair share of, of that part too. And uh, but at the end, uh, it's it's the decisions that you make that will that will bring you to the point where you are at one point. And had I not made the decision to be a call agent when I was 17 and to be running a call center when I was 20 and to come to Croatia when I was 22 to start my own contact center, then if that didn't all happen, then you and I would probably not be sitting here today having this conversation. So, yeah, it's in a way it's all connected. So was there someone in your early days uh, that influenced you, that had a great impact on you in terms of, let's say, teachers or influencers, someone like yeah. a role model that you looked up to? Definitely, yeah. So um, uh, first of all, my, my professor, uh, Richard, Richard, uh, he was the one um, uh, teaching marketing classes, very, very much inspired me to, of course, go and, and, and pursue that direction. Then um, when I started working for uh, for M Plus Group in uh, in the Netherlands, at first my uh, uh, contact center manager and, and trainer, who became a very good friend of mine, Jeroen, uh, who taught me everything there is to know about communication and, and education and trainings in the contact center business. Uh, he very much inspired me. He taught me so much. Um, and then uh, also, for example, uh, Mato, my first business partner, who was the founder of M Plus Group in the Netherlands, who actually, when I was 22, gave me the opportunity to to go to Croatia and to to start the business here in Croatia. Uh, he himself is is a serial entrepreneur as well, and and I've always seen him, uh, especially in, in in the early days, as as a person that that I could learn so much from and as a mentor. So yeah, these are these are individuals that that I definitely consider uh, to be great friends, first of all, mentors, people that have inspired me to, to do what I do today, yeah. On a 
character level, uh, what were you like back then? Or were you like uh, crazy, energetic? Is there something uh, crazy that you did or something unusual that you could share with us? Of yeah. course, legal, but uh, <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> well, uh, I, I can definitely say that uh, I, I was quite serious at a, at a very young age. I, uh, I was very, um, I have to say, determined. Uh, I, I, I knew what I wanted. I, 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 at a very young age, I knew that I wanted to be successful at what I was, that I, what I, what I, what I was going to do. And um, I mean, yeah, can you, can you say that I was crazy? In a way I was, you know, because I was, I was studying and I was at the same time working 40, 50 hours a week and, 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 but that was my thing. I really enjoyed doing that. And um, so, yeah, some people might think that that's crazy when you're 17, 18, 19 years old to be doing something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just, um, uh, very ambitious, very ambitious. So how did you cope with, you know, perspectives and, you know, opinions and your colleagues and friends talking about you in that way? Because obviously a lot of them were partying, having fun. You were the one that was ambitious and working all the time. So, you know, how were you able to, you know, just uh, keep going with everybody, you know, come on, go party with us, let's have fun. Yeah, but the situation wasn't really like that because, I mean, as, as you're also working very hard, you're also surrounding yourself with, with people that do similar thing. You know, of course you have friends that may, they may go out and, and of course they, they call you up a couple of times uh, and then if you if you have to refuse that or if you are refusing that, then of course they come to the point where they simply don't call you anymore. So it, it's also that of course I've, I've in that journey, I've, I've definitely also lost certain people that simply they are not part of your your life anymore really. But then true friends are always there and you know true friends, I mean, I guess that you can count them on what one or two hands, and and these are your true friends, and then everybody else are are acquaintances, are people that you know, people that you once in a while hang out with. But these How are. Can maybe you maybe make the distinction? I think it's an important lesson for young people today, and you know, to know that you're going to lose people along the way, and it's nothing bad. It's not your fault. It's just how to deal with it. Yeah, but that's part of life, you know. I mean, you as a, as an individual. As you're getting older, as you grow up, you develop yourself in a certain way. And that means that as you are developing yourself, you're also changing your environment, your, your surrounding. And I mean, when I was like, again, you know, when I was 22, when I moved to Croatia, I did not know anybody here. Now I know hundreds, if not thousands of people here in, in, in this country. So because I, I met with so many people, and, 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 and with some people you have a great click and, and, and you continue communicating with them and, and they become real great true friends. And then with some people that, that you had that click with in the Netherlands and I haven't seen them Let's and at one lost. point you just don't text each other that often anymore or you don't call each other anymore. Yeah, those relationships, they, they become less strong and that's okay. Just a normal life situation, right? Yeah, it's life. Yeah. So, if you could go back to your younger self, what would you say? L learning, you know, knowing everything that you know today, yeah. if you could have the chance, what would be your, let's say, key message or a couple of words? I would say uh, to my younger self that everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Just uh, uh, follow your heart and, and, and do what you're passionate about, and then things are going to work out. Would that be your message to kids in Croatia as well? Or is there something else that you would like to uh, say to them in order to, you know, move on to develop and keep pursuing their passions? Yeah, just, you know, um, my key message to, to young people here would be that uh, don't think that anybody is going to really make a difference for you. Don't think that the government is somehow going to take care of things for you. The only person that, that can really turn your life into something beautiful or successful, whatever that means, you know, I mean, success is not 
one thing. You know, success is what you believe success is. And that can be having a great job uh, in another company, in a company working for somebody else, but having a great job where you enjoy great flexibility, you have a wonderful wife and, 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 and beautiful kids. Uh, that can be the definition of success. And somebody else's definition of success is hundreds of employees and fast cars, you know? And, and anything in between can, can be a success. But the only person that can, that can create that type of success for you and, and, and to create a happy life for you is that person that you see in the mirror. Nobody else is gonna do that for you. So make choices that make you happy and, and, and be happy with yourself and believe in yourself and do what you really wanna do. And lastly, uh, because there's a lot of people that have influence over those uh, young, great minds, not just in Croatia, but all over the world. But what would be, let's say, your key message to parents, teachers, other leaders, uh, you know, government representatives, all of us uh, influencing and working uh, with kids to, you know, just create a context for them that they can thrive? I mean, if I look at, for example, my parents, um, the, the biggest thing that they have ever given me in life is their support. It's not money. It's, it's, it's not even love. <laughs> it's, it's support, you know? I mean, support in, in, in the decisions that you want to make, uh, that's, I think, the most valuable thing that, that somebody can give. Uh, that can come from your parents, that can come from your friends, that can come from a government that can come from inspirational leaders in whatever kind of sector, you know. It just comes in different ways. Yes, yes, but if, so, if you know, if, if, if you have an idea, you wanna go and do something, and you and I are sitting here and we talk about it, and, and I'm not gonna be sitting here just asking you critical questions, but I'm gonna be sitting here asking you, what can I do to help? How can I make a difference for you? Who are you trying to, to offer this to? Maybe I know people in my network that would actually benefit from what you have. Can I help you? Can I connect you somehow? Can I make content for you in any kind of way to, to support you? That means so much to you, but it means not only so much to you, it means so much to everybody else. As long as you can give just somebody that little push in the back, and people will never forget that. You know, People will always remember the people that helped along the way especially in the beginning, when, when times were tough. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jan, for your positive energy, for everything that you're doing, and for being part of uh, the Digital Incubator, and uh, hope we meet very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it.